Richard, can you hear me? Richard! Hey. 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 How are you doing? Woo! Oh. Do we need more volume? Sound. 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 Please sound. Sound. Oh, sound. <laughs> I'm fucking anything on here. How are Richard? Yeah, I wish I could be there. <laughs> we all wish you to be there. Uh, 26 well. years old. 26, 26 years. That's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, 26 years. And I should note this is the same week that a droid finally took another human life on American soil, which was that thing in Dallas last week. So this seems like a appropriate time timing. Well, I mean, this country seems to be spiraling towards apocalypse pretty, pretty swiftly at the moment. So maybe, you know, 10, 15 years, we're going to be there. The truth is, it always was. <laughs> so can you just say a few words about this film, what it means to you, and what the audience should be expecting? Well, it's just great that after all this time, we can finally see the beast uncut and on um, 35 millimeter, and hopefully in Dolby surround. And I hope that you've whacked up the volume a little. Because, yes. um, yeah, 26 years on, it's still potent. Yeah. Um, what, what are your memories of, of making the film? Um, mostly of being very tired and angry. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, it feels fucking recent, so, um, they're, they're very fresh. What's um, back in those days? Of course, we were still working on film. I mean, the main thing about this beast is it's entirely shot on thirty-five millimeter and laboriously cut on the steam deck. And it was yeah before um, computer-generated imagery existed, so um, everything is live, which is um, something I still um, really appreciate about the monster. Is it is it a film that you look back on with fond? Did you have fond memories of making it? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, it was an apocalyptic time like any other. <laughs> I mean, um, 1989 was a, a, a seriously crazy year as well. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I recall flash floods in the Sahara Desert. I recall, yeah, freaky apocalyptic weather the entire way through. I mean, much of the movie was shot in like really glacial conditions with um, very strong wind. I think we were shooting around the Thames in January. Um, and of course, it's meant to be um, set in a heat wave in um, probably in America, so we have to try and make it look hot the whole time. <laughs> uh, what I should say is that I have with me tonight um, one very special surprise guest. Oh! We have, um... <laughs> yeah, the last of the Mark 13 cyborgs. Uh, still. Still awaiting reactivation, still hidden in some dumb corner of the world, waiting for the time to come again. That's absolutely it. Um, I'm 13, beat my Mac. <laughs> well, we need to put this movie on. So if you have any final words for this fairly large Prince Charles audience, please. David. Well, yeah, I'm glad you made the sensible decision to spend your evening with this um, freaking brute creation from the late <laughs> ages. And uh, be advised that yeah, some of it is still dangerous, in that some of the things in this movie are coming true or have come true. Like, um, I'm particularly pleased with the government monopoly marijuana, the notion that smoking would eventually be supplanted by um, government controlled uh, marijuana supply, which is something which is more or less true. Uh, yeah, I should also say that DARPA and the US military are aiming at having a, um, a droid with um, autonomous mobility and something which is capable of recognizing facial features and what they call adaptive tactical behavior by 2020. So we have you know, another four years, five years to roll. But, um, well, you know, yeah. let's, let's hope it doesn't get this bad that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs>
Two, two is all. Eight, two. 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 Eight